Time now for some more news and there has been a lot going on so we'll try and speed through as many stories as we possibly can. We should probably start with Triumph who have been particularly busy since our last update with new model announcements and some cool and some cheesy marketing. The big news is obviously the official release of a new derivative of the Speed Triple RS called the Speed Triple RR and it is a modern take on the more usual retro themed cafe racer. Although it has a single round headlight and traditional half fairing as cafe racers do, it manages to also look very modern in a way that reminds us just a little bit of MV Augusta's Super Veloce. It should feel very different to the Naked Speed Triple thanks to a drastically altered riding position. So the handlebar has been replaced by clip-ons that are five centimeters further forward and a huge 13 and a half centimeters lower. The foot pegs, they're also a bit higher and further back. So this is definitely a riding position that is gonna feel most at home on the track. The engine remains the same 177 horsepower unit found in the naked version, but the big change comes on the handling side of things with Erlin's semi-active smart suspension that can be adjusted on the move. There's lots of carbon fiber bits and even more goodies available as extras. And in its base form, our guesstimate is that you can probably expect to pay upwards of 310,000 Rand or so. Staying with Triumph, we've got a very clever or very cheesy marketing tie-up with that most British of superheroes, 007. Yes, Mr Bond has given his blessing for just 250 examples of the Tiger 900 Rally Pro to wear some 007 decals, have a bit of 007 stitching in the seat and get to wear a pretty much totally blacked out paint job. The latest film, the last to feature Daniel Craig, No Time to Die, has some big action sequences involving the Tiger 900. And so, with a certificate of authenticity, no less, you'll be able to live out your own two-wheel secret agent fantasies. Everyone is gonna think you are very cool indeed. And absolutely nobody will think you are a saddo who went to watch the film on your own because your girlfriend's lying at home deflated. At least when the embarrassment gets too much you can cover the 007 stickers and still have an absolutely brilliant adventure bike. And just for one extra final bit of Triumph marketing, which I happen to think is a lot cooler, here is a goat riding the soon to be released new Tiger 1200. Ricky Carmichael is the greatest of all time motocrosser who is putting the biggest of the Brit Tigers through its paces here, after which he tells everyone how unbelievably well the new bike handles. I'll be kind and take him at his word, but I also have a feeling he could have thrown a Rocket 3 around that motocross track and it would have looked like that bike was meant to have wings as well. Moving on from the hype machine that is currently Triumph, but staying with British engineering, we have some footage of early testing from the white motorcycles concept land speed record bike. You may remember that we featured this electrically powered machine a couple of months ago in the news, not because of its very catchy name, but because of its remarkable aerodynamic design that features a ruddy gray hole running the length of it. The bike is aiming to set a series of new land speed records in just under a year in Bolivia, South America, and it has just passed some major shakedown tests at Bruntingthorpe Airfield in the Midlands in the UK. The bike doesn't yet have the full power electric motor it will need to get past the 400 km an hour mark that will bring it those world records, but it already features drive to the front wheel as well as chain drive to the rear wheel enclosed in the swing arm. Let's move to Italy now, where the big news is coming out of Mandello del Lario, the home of Moto Guzzi. This is a manufacturer that doesn't exactly produce a lot of new models, so when they announce a major new bike, it really does make headlines. Actually, rather than the new bike, it's a completely new engine that is the big news here. The bike is the V100 Mandello, and the engine is a one-litre V-twin, as you'd expect. You might notice from the images though that the exhaust exit the head directly towards the ground rather than towards the front of the bike as tradition has previously defined. But other than that, there really isn't much in the way of detail. So no power numbers and not even a 
confirmation of capacity yet. All will be revealed at this year's EICMA Expo at the end of November in Milan, so I'll bring you all that as it happens. The V100 designation celebrates 100 years of Motor Guzzi, and along with the new model, it has also been announced that there will be a new factory and museum in what is a really big investment for the Italian manufacturer. The look of the bike has been widely praised, and I can sort of see why, but I can also see why some are disappointed. There was never going to be anything too radical, but although it's kind of neat and modern for a Guzzi, it also reminds me of some bikes that were around in the 1990s. Let's not forget that Motor Guzzi had some stunning concepts designed for it by South African design legend Pierre de Blanche 12 years ago, yet nothing came of them unfortunately, so the rather conservative look of this new model probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise. And a final bit of news if you're a biker who uses an iPhone for navigation while riding. If you mount your phone directly to the bike via the handlebar so you can see the screen, which is something that many of us do, then you might need to rethink your approach. Apple's support page says, and I quote, Exposing your iPhone to high amplitude vibrations within certain frequency ranges, specifically those generated by high power motorcycle engines, can degrade the performance of the camera system. No worries then if you own a Harley Davidson. Apparently it can lose the ability of the camera to focus, which is quite an important feature. As a remedy, Apple recommends doing a burnout on the phone and then throwing it away. No, sorry, that was my response to my iPhone susceptibility to a bit of moisture a few years ago when I decided to abandon Apple's phones in favour of something that was a bit more sturdy. Okay, that's it for the news this week and for this episode, in fact, we'll be back again next week with an excellent naked bike that everyone seems to have forgotten about. We'll see you then.